Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today. And we're going to check out a new app that's available for Annex 15. It's called One to One Assistance. And it's an app designed to allow you to help someone with a remote screen sharing session, either over a local internet connect, a local network connection or with a little configuration of your home route of your router to do it over the internet. So let's get started. I'm going to open up uh, Synaptic. Make sure to refresh your sources. And the app should appear as one-to-one -one assistance. So I'm just going to hit a one here. There it is. One-to-one -one assistance annex. You're going to check that. Mark for installation. It's going to install a bunch of stuff. Hit apply. It's going to download. A, it's a hefty size download. Uh, about 60 megabytes. So, you know, give or take. Both the client machine and the remote machine, both the remote machine and the local machine, will have to have the same. It's the same package installed on both machines, and we'll walk you through the setup. So once the app's downloaded from Synaptic, it's going to set itself up the usual spiel here. Sorry, I paused the video there. My net connection is really slow today, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so anyway, it's going to set up a bunch of stuff here. Uh, security certificates, a little Java, um, and once you're done, it's going to appear in the Antics Internet menu. So let's close Synaptic here. Whoops, there we go. Applications, Internet, one to one assistance. Now, what one to one assistance is, it's going to uh, it's provide a peer-to-peer -peer shared desktop experience, or actually a remote desktop, I should say, to allow one person who we were going to call the provider to help the person who needs who needs the help. We're, we're going to call the receiver. So we're going to fire up one-to-one -one assistance and says, "Which one are you? Receive assistance or provide assistance?" I'm going to click receive for now, just to show you the setup. It's going to allow some options for resizing your desktop. Now if you have a big monitor I recommend you click resize. You can also leave it unchanged. I'm going to leave it unchanged for now. And now it's going to say provide the IP address of the assistance provider. This is the neat part. The person receiving the help is in complete control of the connection experience. So they need to know the IP address. Now the assumption here is and the the um, the documentation will show up in user share antics FAQ, FAQ, and it's really good documentation. I suggest you check it out. It runs through the entire setup routine and everything, plus some advanced tweaking features down at the bottom. Check it out. We're going to cover the basics right now. You're, the, person, the person on the other side is going to need to provide the receiver of, his, of the help, the assistance, with their IP address, and this assumes that you know what you're doing and can give them IP address. If you're on the same local network, it's easy. You look at your IP config, and there's the address. If you're over the internet, you can use something like whatsmyip.com or something like that to get your remote access. And also, that person providing the help is going to need to set up a port forwarding situation and get through their router. We'll cover that in a second. So anyway, so. If I put in a IP address here, it would connect to a remote server. I'm going to cancel out and show you the setup for providing the help. Let's see, whoops, wrong menu, internet, and one to one assistance. So I'm going to provide help this time. Now there's a little bit more involved here. It's going to generate a SSL certificate. You need to have that for the encryption to work. So, yes, we're going to say call it OK. It's going to go through a bunch of stuff here. You can read this. If you know what it means, fine. If you don't, that's fine. What you need to know is you hit Generate Cert down here. And do you want to view it? You can view it if you want to. I'm going to say no because I really don't know if you have any no, but we do have it. So we are listening to it. It's going to go into a listening mode now. Now, remember when we had that IP address that we were going to enter? This on the receiver mode. This is waiting for a receive for the receiver to connect. 
So I'm going to tell it my, I'm going to tell, I have another computer here already set up, and I am going to tell it my IP address. Now I'm on a local network, but there are instructions in the FAQ that I showed you to uh, set up a port forwarding situation router. So you can do this over the internet. And the, the brilliant part is the person who needs the help, who we assume is not up to speed on, or is not a guru, so to speak, uh, uh, doesn't need to know how to do any of that. You just forward it here. Now my IP address is here, so I'm going to switch computers and enter the IP address 192.168.1.137 that is the receive that is the provider computer who's going to help me with the desktop and now you see we are connecting we get a approval message here press yes to approve the connection and now we're going to switch back to the you see we have a little little icon set up down here for the for the VNC display, and we're going to switch back to the to my main Annex computer, and here it is. I have my remote desktop. This is actually an e-machine, uh, an e-PC, so it's only running 1024 by 600, so it fits nicely on my scre screen the way it is. You see here we have the connection it is using SSVNC, so it is encrypted. Press F8 for a menu. This gives you some performance options if you need to tweet the connection to to speed up the the view and you can also uh, so you can now do whatever it is you need to do to the remote machine either party can kill the connection at any time by right clicking down here and hitting stop x11 vnc and that's it you can help someone make a configuration file do whatever you need anything short of rebooting if you reboot of course the connection is going to break so you're going to have to do it over again but this is a great way to reach out over the net or reach out over your local network and help someone with their annex connection it's all encrypted it's all secure and it doesn't require a third-party server managing your connection props go to sam k for getting this app done. It's a neat app. Hopefully we'll have a companion app up in the repo shortly that enables a private voice server. Be on the lookout for the video on that. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.